Hi guys and this is Jeff. So I know you guys probably click on this video because of the video title and because of that I do want to make a few quick points before I jump into my review. So for myself, I've been flying on this route for a decade from Sydney to Hong Kong, Hong Kong to Sydney. So I've witnessed the changes that they have made throughout the years. I actually do think Cafe Pacific itself has a really good product. Like the seat feature is amazing, the food, even though I've heard mixed reviews, like they have improved a lot. At the end of the day for an aviation product would be the services. And I didn't really get that for this flight. So just to list an example, like when I first flown on this route, uh, they actually have hot tower services for economy class passengers. This just disappeared. I realized that their service has just got reduced, reduced and reduced to a point where they are only performing absolute minimum in order to keep a passenger alive on 30,000 feet. For an airline with five star Skytrax rating with such a good reputation, this is something that has to be pointed out and I'm not saying that all of the flights on Cafe Pacific are going to be like that but this could be an indicator that that is the level of service that they provide across the board. I really hope that is not the case. Right now I'm going to show you guys my flight from Sydney to Hong Kong. The bad things of course but also the good things. Here we go. And little did I knew, I would come across my first hiccup already before I board on the flight because I don't have any check-in luggage and I've done my online check-in and downloaded my boarding pass on my phone so that I thought that was the whole procedure and I could just go straight to the boarding gate. Because my passport details have not been verified throughout the check-in process and I got stopped before I could board on the flight. Thank, Thank you sir, have a good trip. Good morning. Good morning. Oh. Oh. Did you do online check-in? Yeah, I did. Okay. I waited for 5 minutes before the ground staff could verify my details. This is indeed a bit of an inconvenience and Cafe Pacific could have improved the process for passengers who decided to take advantage of the mobile boarding pass. But at the end of the day, I understand that security matters and I'm happy to cooperate on that. The ground staff was apologetic about the wait and she was professional throughout the process and after the green light, I could go on to my flight. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a safety requirement that all hand-carried items are securely stowed under the seat in front of you or in the overhead compartment. Before the flight takes off, I thought I would just do a quick rundown on today's flight. I'm flying on the A350-900 today, so this product is actually pretty new. It has a configuration of 333, but it seems like the seats are a little bit more narrow as compared to my previous Singapore Airlines flight. So initially, it does feel a bit more cramped for me. You are given a pillow and a blanket on this flight. The pillow is a little bit thin and deflated. The blankets are passable. As for the headrest, well I can finally move it with only one hand. It is a little bit hard for my liking. Ah, first world problems. But the entertainment system is amazing. Perhaps it's because Cathay Pacific targets more to Asian passengers. It has great selection of both Western and Asian programs, which I really appreciate that when an airline caters to a multicultural audience. Oh, hello, how are you? And with the new IFE, you get to see the front view and the top view of the plane as well which I really enjoy it. So IFE, tick. And one more thing, if you look at the top, I have to say that the seatbelt sign shown on an LED monitor is actually really cool, I'm not gonna lie. I think this would be the future. So everyone, briefing is done, up up here we come. So usually after the seatbelt sign is off, I would go and check out the bathroom. But as I was taking some videos at the corridor while I was waiting, things happened. One of the cabin crew seemed annoyed that I was blocking her way and she gave me a bit of a dirty look. I'm not gonna lie, it did make me feel a bit uncomfortable. And it was me, not her, who was smiling back. 
what? Oh well, it was my turn so I just went straight into the bathroom. The bathroom is well maintained and I do like this Instagram influencer style mirror here. However, no amenities such as toothbrushes are provided in the bathroom, as compared to Singapore Airlines. As I got back to my seat, I already saw the cabin crew pushing out the meal trolleys and serving food. So I was like, what? Where's the nuts and drink service for a 9 hour flight? Do they not have the time? Or are they skimping on nuts? I do not know. A little bit disappointing, no nuts, no drinks whatsoever after departure, they just head straight into breakfast service. For today's flight, there is the western option with scrambled eggs and hash brown, and the asian option with pork congee. It's rare to have congee on a flight, so I ended up picking the asian option. Before I start eating, I want to show you my setup. This is pretty cool, as you can see there is an additional level above the tray table to put up your phone, which means it is the perfect setup to watch your pre-downloaded Netflix shows while eating your meal. This, I'm really impressed. So enough of the talk, let's open this one up now. Hmm, the congee was surprisingly good, considering I don't usually pick congee myself. The texture was on point, it wouldn't be too hard or too mushy, and the flavours are pretty good for a congee, it wouldn't be too strong, but you can still taste the pork. The bread roll is not bad, it would be better if it is a little bit warmer. And also, you get a bottle of Harrogate spring water. Fancy. And on this flight, Wi-Fi is available for a charge. While I did not purchase it, I still tested this out by browsing their home portal. The speed is pretty fast. After breakfast, the lights are dim to allow us to kick back and relax. I couldn't sleep, so I was playing some Sudoku to kill time. Alright guys, just a bit of a quick update from me. A little bit off topic, but uh, even my room has a bit of a mood lighting right now. Anyway, so in between right now up until the second meal surface, so that should be around 5 to 6 hours. Maybe I didn't notice it myself, but unfortunately I didn't see any cabin crew walk down the aisle and offered passengers water, soda or juices during the entire time. It is a little bit unusual because usually for a mid-haul flight, just like Singapore Airlines, they would offer drinks every hour or every two hours. Because of that, I actually had to walk out of my seat, went to the galley and asked the cabin crew for some water. But obviously they delivered when asked. Not just I felt like the breakfast service was rushed, but for this flight, it is also lacking a lot of the essential services for a mid-haul flight. So we didn't receive any nuts or snacks or drinks throughout the flight. It is all limited to the meal services. I've mentioned about how the cabin crew were not proactive and in certain situations, they were not that friendly, which I find this really odd. Anyway, we'll get back to my vlog. Two and a half hours before landing, same old, no nuts or drinks provided, just went straight to the lunch service. I hope they could redeem themselves with an exceptional meal. Let's revisit the menu again. For lunch, they have three choices, a stir-fried pork with rice, fish with potatoes, and a vegetable lasagna. I picked the fish. It's also worth mentioning that Cathay Pacific now offers their own branded beer, Betsy, even on economy class. It is said to be brewed specifically to enjoy at 35,000 feet and adapting to your palace in the skies. But we'll talk about the food first. Okay, the fish. It is a bit dry, but the flavors are okay. I cleaned that up anyway. And then we have the smoked chicken salad with pumpkin couscous, which is quite flavorsome. Same note on the bread, it's good, but it could be served warmer. And of course, there is the Mofin Pick ice cream as well. And then, here we go, dun 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 dun, is Betsy! The design of the can itself looks really slick. Does it taste as good as it looks? Let's find out. Hmm. Initially, I thought it tasted like the Australian beer Phoebe, which means it came across quite bitter. But as you continue drinking it, you just adapt to that taste and it really will grow on you. To top it off, they had this Christmas special chocolate, but I dropped it. 
low. And this is it, guys. Finito. It's been a pleasure having you aboard this evening on uh, this flight to uh, Hong Kong. And on behalf of myself and the entire crew, I'd like to thank you for flying Captain Pacific Airways and hope to see you again in the near future. Captain, you're 30 minutes flying. Thank you. So, final thoughts? This is a bit of a mixed one because I personally think, from a hardware perspective, it is no doubt a 5 star product. Despite the seats a little bit cramped, they are actually quite updated and the entertainment system is amazing. And I have to say, the best beer is a great addition to their drinks menu. The execution of this is flawless. Unfortunately, the surface on this flight will be a huge flaw for this experience. Not just their surfaces, whether that is drinks or snacks, they were only limited to the two meals throughout the 9 hour flight. But I also noticed there were one or two cabin crew, I could feel that they didn't even want to be there to work. Look, I understand that it is a physically demanding job, but at the same time, it is important to make passengers feel comfortable around your presence, right? We won't bite you after all. Small things like this really shows whether a cabin crew actually care about their customers or they're just performing an absolute minimum to get over the line with their boss. Unfortunately, what I've observed on this flight for a certain cabin crew would be the latter. I'm not saying all of the Cafe Pacific flights are like that. Actually, for my return flight back to Sydney, there were nuts and drink services before both dinner and breakfast. Maybe it's this team that have been worn out at our port, I don't know, but no check-in drinks in the span of 6 hours is definitely not a representation of a 5 star service. So, what are your thoughts on flying with Cafe Pacific? Are they still good, or are they declining, or are the airlines just outshone Cafe Pacific with their rapid improvements over the years? Let me know, I'm keen to hear from you. Thank you for watching this video, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this kind of vlogs, and I'm always happy to hear your feedback. I will see you all next time.